Thus I vied to Farai, advocate of his imperial majesty, Emperor Ayla Selassie I. The time is now, the time is right for the lion to tell its own story. It is the time for the lion to roar. But I remember last year we were we were honoring the 130th anniversary and I had a bunch of youngsters and I was talking to these youths about the bird. So, you know, you minimize and, and bring the thing down to real level. And I was saying, can you imagine your wife was pregnant, she lost the first pregnancy and was so sad about it. A year or so after she became pregnant again and lost the second child. And you could hear the, you could hear the youths then. Mm. And I went on to the third. And, I, and then at the end of it, I said, the third child also died. And then, and, and then I went on to the fourth. And my grandson interceded and said, Grandpa, don't tell me so the fourth child or dead now, do you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. yes, the fourth child did die. And I went on to the fifth and the sixth. And then he said, then then Grandpa, what? The then always McConnell and continue to live with her. And he said, Yes, that is a good thought you're thinking about because check check the moment of Ras McConnell. The, the, the first God, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. He must be a distraught man. He must be a man who's saying, God, what happened to me? Yes, what happened to your stream yes. my bed? Is it that there's a curse on me? Now. You know, when I and I irate on this word sound, Yeshima Bed had lost eight children already. Yes. So I definitely know this ninth, this birth of Lij Tafari, this is the prophesied birth that is coming. Eight children had gone before. It could easily have been a ninth one and no one's life would be in danger. But I and I block it right here now. They took extreme care knowing that their very lives depended on their serving their mistress well on this momentous occasion. The mother was in the final stages of labor as they forced back impulses to panic. The servants almost failed to hear the sputtering whimpers as the babe emerged from the womb, his tiny body steaming slightly. Lion voice, tell them that's the people first choice. Lion voice, make the lion let them feel nice. Lion voice, with the lion cubs we sacrifice. Lion voice, got to show the people them the lion. Lion voice. <laughs> Well, front to us, a son was born and a child was given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called the Wonderful, Counselor, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Then he called him, Lich Tofari, when he was born, rain fall from the sky. Then he called him, Lich Tofari, when he was grown in your plains he fly. They call him, Lich Tofari, a young break the chain, weep not, don't cry. Then he called him, List of a ride, read your revelation, chapter 5, verse 5. Then, born near the city of Harar, the inspiration for Bob Marley's guitar. People crowd him like some big superstar. It no matter if a England or Cote d'Ivoire, no matter if you're brown or black like a tar. Highly Selassie, Sefi, and all tribal for a time. Fi gather Mount Zion, fi drive solar car from the car straight to Zanzibar. Who we are? The sons of Mr. When he was born, rain fall from the sky. Christopher I, when he was grown in airplanes, he fly. Then, Christopher I, the lion break the chain, weep not, don't cry. Then, Christopher I, we do revelation. Well, Father Ethan, this one make them go on them laptop and start the lead song. Well, I this last side the first of the Almighty, and this is the Charles Match Quasi. Listen. Well, righteousness, yes, I, righteousness, king, at these they trod. 
Half he can face, yes, right now King Silas, yeah, he greater than a sky god Righteous days, yes, aye Righteous days, king of these day trad Half he can face, yes, right now King Silas, yeah, he greater than a sky god Well, them will fi see them god come out of sky Let me know the poor drive and pass them by Greetings in that divine name of his imperial majesty Emperor Haile Selassie the first Glory and honor in the name of his chosen queen, Empress Waziro Menen. My name is Kwasi Bansu, a.k.a. the Chasmarch Kwasi, a.k.a. Ras Kwasi, a.k.a. the Reading Ras, a.k.a. the Pan-African Happy Man. I'm an entertainment attorney, I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm an actionist, and right now I am the host of the Lion's Voice. Welcome to the Lion Voice Network and welcome to a special edition of the Lion's Voice. Today is the earth strong of I and I, I find Majesty and Pryor Selassie I the first and in celebration or in celebration, I reached out to some of I and I brethren and sisters to have a reasoning that we always have on the Nyabingi campsite but since this is a digital age, I said, let us carry this into the digital sphere because many ones will not be able to reach Nyabingi Kansai. Many ones love Rastafari, but you know, may not sight up. And some ones just may want the information. So I wanted to bring two of the most knowledgeable Rastafari I know on this topic, I and I, Superpower I tell ones is the network, and I feel honored that I can tap uh, ones of this esteem uh, to come and have this conversation about Lich Tafari, the birth uh, that would literally change the face of planet Earth and the trajectory of humanity. So, without further ado, let me introduce the guests. Um, I have uh, first a royal matriarch. Uh, you've seen her on this platform before, um, on Lion Talk, one of our better performing episodes. She's a doctor. She's a mother. Uh, she is a Rastafari, Sistrian, frontline uh, warrior. And she is also an academic, a librarian. You know, you just go and watch the episode. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Dr. Mama Walete. Um, Beres Ford, we give thanks. Welcome forward. Thanks. Back. To the give platform. Thanks. Uh, and we have another Bridget uh, that I have also known for many years from the Naya Bingley House. Uh, many of the items will already recognize this Bridget. Um, one of our esteemed uh, Aya Bingley warriors who is trained in the preceptical order. One of those who was able to you know, stand in the midst with Ieshen Bongo Watu around the world, soaking up the wisdom and the knowledge and the essence of the evolution of the Ayabingi Ada. He's also a beekeeper. He's also a father. He's also a copyright owner. Many works of Rastafari chants, many of the Ayabingi chants that we chant, you know, he has irated them. I, Love a chant, it was 1892 in the province of Harar. And Sister Aini had to make sure I and correct I make I know say is the I right that chant there, you know. Yes, so, the you know we, we, yeah, man. So he he is etched into the history. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Ras Ivy to far right. <laughs> Welcome, Ras Ivy to the Lion Talk Lion Voice Network. Give thanks to Jazz Mark on this blessed day. It's a joy to just be here with, you know, two of I, I love it, Rastafari exponents, you know, and to share the joy of this day. Very special day in Ethiopia, very special day to Africa, and later on the world will realize how special that day was when it impacted the, the global scene. So we give thanks. Rastafari. Yes, yes. And just to show you how futuristic Rastafari faith has become, the tree of I and I will be chanting Naya Bingi when the item will see this video. So this is pre-recorded. <laughs> <laughs> the item 
will we will know that the tree of I and I will be you know in the midst of the eyes. However, we are we are we are futuristic in in, in putting forward a reasoning about Lichtafari. Now, Momo Alete, I want the eye to really just set the context for I and I. There, I wrote a book that I cited heavily in, in Ayman book in terms of you know who is Yashima Bet. Uh, what is the lineage? You know, uh, yes, please. Let's introduce the book. Set the scene. I want us to paint a picture today because these are storytellers like myself. You know, some of the great orators in Rastafari. Right? Set the scene for I and I, please. Yes, sir. I'm going to set the scene, but not until I give honor and glory to Katamawi Haile Selassie the first and Empress Men and Asfa. And also greetings and blessings to Anai Rastafari Patriarch, Ras Ivai. Yes, I got chills when the I was blocking on his authorship of the Naya Bingi chants. Woo! Yeah, man. Bingi writes, sweet Ras Ivai. We give so much thanks for the I's wise mind and for the I's forward thinking irate as it relates to being able to document and write the chants. So much hymn book I and I read as Pickney. I know we are right hymn book, we are right chants. So give thanks for that mighty work, Ras I Vai. Yeah, man, Bingy don't write sweet unless the I chants chants. So give thanks, give thanks, honor. Yes, I, so as I and I, I elaborate the 131st earth light physical in the flesh, the coming forward of I and I, Irata, I and I King, I and I Ja, the universal paymaster, Katamawi Haile Selassie. Yes, I, it's, it's a mighty time. It's a for us, the far right people. And I love coronation, but I, and I love July 23rd, same way. And as I, I dictate on the birth of His Majesty, the birth of Lij Tafari, the coming forward. Um, you know, it puts I in the space that I call his birth mother, his mother, Yeshimabet Ali Abba Jifar. Um, the book that I wrote uh, some time ago, a few years ago, is a book that gives a little history on His Majesty's mother. Um, as ones know, I've blocked many times on many different platforms that it was an assignment that was given to I by Karamawi Haile Selassie. Um, I was asked to write this book and to do this work and I went forward and gave it an earnest effort. I hope in times to come, you know, I will touch down in Ethiopia in Harar you know, maybe within the next year or so is my intention and possibly do further research on Yeshimabet. Um, go to her place of resting in Hara, in the walled city and um, do an addendum to the book. But in the interim, a little background on his majesty's mother. Not much is known about her. Uh, there's a dearth in the research on her not much is found at all. I've, I've looked at the um, Historical Society of Wolo, which is based in Maryland here. I've gone through Smithsonian Institute and worked with the uh, librarian for African affairs, East African affairs, specifically for Ethiopia. Um, I visited the region of Wolo, uh, going through Kombolcha Airport touching down in Desi, and then almost four hours to the Wolo region, which is the region of um, Yeshimabet. And what I've learned um, about His Majesty's mother is that she grew in the household of royalty. Her father was a Wolo uh, chieftain, and um, her mother was the wife of his Majesty's, I would say His Majesty's, it was Ras Darge, and Ras Darge is the son of 
uh, Ras Sahale Selassie. And Sahale Selassie is the father of Tananawar Sahale Selassie. And she is the mother of Ras Makonen. And Ras Makonen, we know, is the father of Karamawi. So Ras Darge is the brother of Tananawar Sahale Selassie, who is His Majesty's grandmother. So she would then be the uncle of Ras Makonen. So His Majesty's great uncle. Yeshimabet, Yeshimabet's mother was married to Ras Darge. So Yeshimabet grew in the household of the ruling family of the time. Sahale Selassie was the king of Shoah. This is Ras Makonen's grandfather. And she grew in this household and her uncle, or, or his, uh, Ras Makonen's uncle, when uh, Yeshimabet became the age of 12, around 12. Um, Ras Makonen gave her in marriage to his nephew, uh, not, not Ras Makonen, I pray thee, Ras Darge gave her to his nephew, Ras Makonen, to be his wife. She was a child bride, as was the traditions in Ethiopia, customs and traditions at that time. She was about 12 years old when she wed to, um, to Ras Makonen. Uh, Yeshimabet uh, would have been the mother of 10 children, uh, His Majesty Olich Tafari being the ninth. Uh, she lost eight pregnancies prior to his birth, and she transitioned with the 10th pregnancy two years post His Majesty's birth in March of 1894 was the time of her transition. Um, contrary to uh, much of the word sound that I and I got in the early Iowa, it was not at birth, at the birth of his majesty, but at the youth that came two years after his majesty. Um, and I also heard that, um, you know, there was no family and no one remained and, you know, it's sealed with her. But his majesty for some time grew in the household of Yeshimabet's mother and also an aunt, the mother's sister. Um, in his book, in His Majesty's autobiography, uh, My Life and Ethiopia's Progress, is His Majesty speaks about, as he travels uh, for his, his affairs, his uh, responsibilities, various roles of leadership, and I know His Majesty holds many, many titles, as he traveled away from Hara, he was never concerned about the affairs of Hara because they were being taken care of by his very capable grandmother. This is the mother of Yeshimabet Ali Abajifa. And the history for uh, that side of the family, the maternal side of his majesty's family, I learned um, is uh, Guragi. The grandmother comes from Guragi roots, hence the title of the book, Guragi, 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 the story of a willow princess, Wazero Yeshimabet Ali Abba Jeffar. Um, Guragi was also a term in uh, Ethiopian culture or Ethiopian history that would be um, equivalent to a porter at a hotel. So when uh, guests would arrive and, you know, various ones would arrive at the hotels, you know, they would just come out and say, Guragi, Guragi, because this was the work of the Guragi. His Majesty, um, during... Um, his Majesty um, later changed the term from Guragi um, to another term. And I suppose it has to do with the Guragi lineage, lineage of his grandmother, who he absolutely adored, his maternal grandmother, Yeshimabet's mother. Um, I'll touch a little bit, uh, just for a couple of minutes, maybe two or three minutes, on the birth of Lij Tafari. 
Um, this is a well-known um, word sound, but it never ceases to amaze I, because July 23rd, 1892 came after a four-year drought, a drought that began in Ethiopia in 1888, yes. a drought that was called the evil days. The Kefuken. Kefuken, yes, because I. the drought was... Um, it was a drought that took a lot of lives, not just the livestock and the agriculture, but a lot of lives. I always think about um, the timing, um, the timing of the drought and the timing of Katamawi's birth. And I'll read from the, I'll read from the book. I'll just touch maybe two, two pages or so. The rains had begun in Hara that July day and this is speaking, I believe, July 23rd, or maybe the eve of, you know, yeah. as it goes into the morning, maybe the 22nd. The rains had begun in Harada July day. Great clouds were again amassing on flat-topped Kombolcha. A few miles out from the town, the governor, which is Ras Makonen, had his country villa at Ijersagoro on the Kombolcha Road. And it was a wattle and daub type house with a certain Indian appearance about its outside veranda. The forecourt was crowned with quests from near and far. Now this uh, property is still actually there. Um, it's in disrepair, but it actually still sits there and it's visible online. So I'll probably uh, send an image to the eye to just match that the eye can show it as I and I blog this evening. Yes, yes. Yes, I. So when a woman is in travail, and they're speaking of Yeshimabet, it's, it's time for her to give birth. Other women will go to her and salute her, saying, Didst thou pass the night well? May Mary keep near thee. When the travail is over, they will wish her well, saying, Mary, Mary, restore thee with honor. Then when the child is born, the woman may raise the cry of joy. Mary is hearkening, nor will she need much aid. The glad father will fire his rifle if such is found, and drawing his sword will stretch it across the door for a space, while the old women raise up the babe to watch it. Before one hour has passed, butter will be placed in his mouth, and the mother will lie tight swathed in a length of cloth lest her back all of her some such scene can imagine can we can imagine in that country house near hara the arrival of women woman after women to give her loyal greeting and to gather around the mother's bed to discuss how soon the babe will be born. Countless stories exist about the birth of Lij Tafari. Most are unverifiable and others are grounded in oral traditions. This is one recollection. On the first day, a stern faced nobleman kept vigil outside of the round house of dried earth and ash and it had a conical thatched roof of wattle wood. I'm gonna skip through a little bit. Yes, go ahead. There was, yes, I, a gun bearer stood behind him, cradling the man's fine rifle in scarlet cotton, in a scarlet cotton sheath, holding it high above the swerving dust. Farther back from the pier, so these are two that are standing there with their rifles and further back from the pair fanned out in a wide half circle. So let I and I get a visual for that vibration. The two were standing with their rifles and their hands in position in the event that they need to fire and fanned out behind them in a wide sphere, right? A wide half circle upon the sloping hillock was a large contingent of soldiers in ceremonial dress. Now, this, this is the birth of Lij Tafari. 
Yes, Ras Makonen is the governor of the region. He's the governor of Hara, but listen to the pomp and the circumstance. Yes. Right? Each of them, each of those that were fanned out in the wide half circle are holding, they're grasping a loaded carbine, which mm. is a, a form of weaponry or something. Yes. Beyond, yes, I, beyond this mass of men were tight clusters of peasants prostrate and in prayer. So we have the two that are in front. Behind that pier, we have the wide fan of ones and ones all holding the loaded carbine. And behind them are the peasants all prostrate and in prayer. The torrid breezes from the desert carrying them fervently as they chanted uh, Nimas, which are Zimas, I pray thee, which are Isis, and in the cool recesses of the house. Inside, the physicians administered to the mother under the watchful gaze of priests clutching long malimias, which are prayer sticks, keeping their heads bowed, their eyes averted. The servants fulfilled all requests quickly and quietly, but with extravagant care, knowing their very lives depended on it. Now, you know, when I and I irate on this word sound, Yeshima Bed had lost eight children already. Yes. So I definitely know this ninth, this birth of Lij Tafari, this is the prophesied birth that is coming. Eight children had gone before. It could easily have been a ninth one and no one's life would be in danger. But I and I block it right here now. They took extreme care knowing that their very lives depended on their serving their mistress well on this momentous occasion. The mother was in the final stages of labor as they forced back impulses to panic, the servants almost failed to hear the sputtering whimpers as the babe emerged from the womb, his tiny body steaming slightly. The awful tension exploded with a shrill bawling from the tawny male infant and all hands concentrated on preparing the child for inspection by his father. This is Rasmakanen is gonna come forward now. The servant's eyes blurred with tears of relief as they washed him, anointed him with fine oils and daubed his thin lips with melted blessed butter. And their ears rang with the din of rifle reports as hundreds of guns saluted from every valley, the nativity of Tafari Makonen, the son yeah. of Ra Rastafari. Uh, yeah, Rastafari, the son yeah. of Ras Makonen of Hara under Menelik II, and Makonen's wife, Wazero Yishimabet. Mighty, mighty, mighty. Right. Um, because it, it, it was a show of military force and wealth because remember that Harar had only recently been incorporated into the empire um, by Ras Mokonen and Emperor Menelik who, who fought in that battle himself, a famous battle. So right. he's still relatively new in Harar, um, a Christian governor in a Muslim Stronghold. I want you to stick a pin right there. Yes, sir. Forward, Russ Ivy. You know, yes. you hear all of this beautiful <laughs> um, picture being painted. You know, um, of course, it, it, it is as if I, I am there. I'm in the Gas of Gore. I'm among the priesthood with the fireworks yes. and the drums and the chant and all anticipating the arrival of the sun. But, mm. but, um, you know, I want to go forward to. Timothy White's book, Catch a Fire, mm -hmm. Thy mm -hmm. Kingdom Come. Yes, there's sir. an article that speaks volumes as mm. though prior to this birth. Mm. Because in Timothy White's book, 
um, that in that the chapter Thy Kingdom Come, it said the astrologers had seen that Neptune and Pluto were moving towards each other in a mm. evil century mm. in 1999. And it would mm. have taken 493 years to bisect each other. Mm-hmm. And it would have the constellation of Leo. And a mm. child would be born in Ethiopia. And it, mm. shall, it, shall, it shall sit up, the child shall be the reigning monarch of Ethiopia. Yeah? Mm. And he went on to say that this child shall be the child that was prophesied in the book of Isaiah. That at 9 verse 6, that unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, a government shall be upon his shoulders, mm-hmm. his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the wow. Mighty God, the Ever Living Father, and the mm-hmm. Prince of Peace. Of peace. And yeah. of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David, mm-hmm. none to order it, or to establish the justice and judgment, because he said, The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this so that prophecy was there from way back 1399 mm-hmm. no five well so so, so, so when when it comes to um and, and lady you know mm-hmm. we look at um revelation 12 that speaks of this woman that satan did decide that she could she should not bring forth you know but within a time you know she was relieved and she brought forth a man child that was caught up to god and his throne so we said wow this this equates to the plight of lady yashima but i remember last year we were we were honoring the 130th anniversary and i had a bunch of youngsters and i was talking to these youths about the birth so you know you minimize and and bring the thing down to their level and I was saying, can you imagine your wife was pregnant? She lost the first pregnancy and was so sad about it. A year or so after, she became pregnant again and lost the second child. And you could hear the, you could hear the youths then. Mm. And I went on to the third. And, I, and then at the end of it, I said, the third child also died. And then, and, and then I went on to the fourth, and my grandson interceded and said, Grandpa, don't tell me so the fourth child or dead now, do you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. said, well, yes, the fourth child did die. And I went mm-hmm. on to the fifth and the sixth. And then he said, Then, then Grandpa, what? what, what, what? Then, then all of us and continue to live with her. And he said, Yes, that is a good thought you're thinking about because check. Check the moment of Ras Makane. The, 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 the first dawn, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. He must be a distraught man. He must be a man who's saying, God, you want to me? Yes. Want to just yes. my bed? That there's a curse on me. And remember, yes. you would have, like in Jamaica, I'm sure you would have um, people who see the, who think they are seers or spiritualists or uh, would come and say Ras Makane. You listen to me no man, you have to go, you have to go change your wife, you know. Got something, you know. So Ras Makonen had a lot of different people coming to him, and you have others who would come and say, Ras Makonen, you have a daughter, you know, man. Listen, man, from your from your take off your pants, man. She's ready to give birth. Yeah. yeah so everyone was telling Ras Makonen all kind of things, but he being a devout Christian. Decided that he would not go the way of the soothsayers. He would not go the way of mm-hmm. the truly love, he truly love her. Of yeah, man. But the average person, they would have said, no, nah, man, something wrong. Six child, seven child going into the eight. But we, we know now because Arar, as they are rightly mentioned, as a Muslim state, that even the Mohammed, Mohammedan prophets, came to Ras Makonen and said, Ras Makonen, we have seen it. Your child with Yashima bet this time shall live. Now, here now she's pregnant with a nine child. This is a man of faith, you know. And I remember him going to, to, to the palace to see Emperor Menelik. And, you know, Menelik must look at him and see that he was sad. And Menelik would have hugged him and said, my son, have mm. faith. Mm-hmm. You're a good man. God of Ethiopia will hear your prayer. Yeah? And, and you will have a son. So even Menelik, you know, Menelik was looking forward 
to succession. Yes. And, he, and, and, and as, as McConnell was his trusted ambassador, advisor, he was looking and hoping that Ross McConnell would have a son who would be eligible to the throne by way of Lady Yashima there. It was whispered, so, yes, it was whispered that he would be the benediction, yes. yes. Exactly. Yes. So so this was a moment for Ras Makonen. It was also a very tense moment for Lady Yashima Bet because she just check her empress wanting to give the king man a son, wanting to give him a child. This don't you'd ever you'd ever business about the sex now, you know. Just give him a child. She was, she was a woman broken in spirit. But I think their, their, their Christian faith, their orthodoxy, had them having a faith in the Almighty that, yes. So when, when, when these years come and say, Rasma come in, what you have to do to have, make this child live, take your wife up to the higher mountain in the grass of Gora for her to bring forth. And Ras Makonim was contemplating. And he answered back and said, well, if it's the will of God that the child should live, then the child will live if I stay here in our eye. And if it's mm -hmm. his will, and if it's not his will, I can go up to Ejasagoro e and the child still die. So I am having mm -hmm. faith in the Almighty that wherever I am, it is God's will that will prevail. But later on, you know, when these when these prophets come and talk, you know, then just dust the dirt off of them shoes and gone like you, you know. If you contemplate, you deliver this message, it's up to you now to carry on the task. So Ras Makone now decided and said, no, man, I have to do what was advised. So, you know, the journey up to, up to Adasa Gora now. And, and, mm -hmm. and I think Christine Sanford is her book. Yes. Yeah. You know, the animals was part of that entourage going up to, yes. to, to Adasa Goro. The, the animals followed, and the birds, every, every, everyone, the villagers followed because mm -hmm. everyone wanted to ensure that Governor Asma Conan's wife, Lady Yashima Beth, had a yes. safe community. So as you said in your book, um, Empress, the priests were there, the armies were there, Yes. Yes. The armies were there, the priests were there, the, 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 the villagers were there because this is their governor. Because remember, they loved Governor Ras Makonen so much. All the priors were there. So, yes. and, 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 and as this, it was a Saturday. Let's, let's remember it was a Saturday, 23rd of July, 1892. And, and, and the, the seers had told in, in, in 1399, they had said, that mm. how you're going to know that this is the child born in 1892 because remember many children were born in 1892 you know but mm -hmm. it said the one that born and the drought is broken mm -hmm. that's the sign mm. that this mm. is the child mm -hmm. so like the psalmist said he shall come down like rain upon the moon grass yes. as, as far as i was pulled clear from the womb Christine Sanford Road, it was claps of lightning, peals of thunder. Yes, sir. At the arrival of this child. Mm -hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. the little right. Leishan went down to miles. Just imagine that little Leishan going through the valleys, the hills, and mm -hmm. the women in other regions picking up, and little Leishan continue on into the other uh -huh. village. And they knew, and then the rainfall made everyone aware that something special had happened. And it was heralded all over the rifles. Now, every man took out them thing, you know, them carbine, they start licking yes. you know, it up. I, I, I remember in those days, bullets were very expensive, you know. Yes. Also, but, a display but, but of at wealth. This time, you have no care for the expensive bullets no, because the, the birth of this child is most. And there's an end to the drought. Yes. Exactly. The drought had ended, so the, the, the rifles can conveyed the message. Something spectacular had happened. Happen. Mm -hmm. Ras McConnell couldn't wait for the doors to open, and the midwife said, Your Highness, a child, your son is born. You must know the joy of Ras McConnell. Can't mm -hmm. wait. The I, side to the old is only begotten by Lady Yeshiva. So I, I, I have a 1892. 
yes, yes I, have, I, I have a theory I want to put forward to the IDEM because I, I theorize that the thunder was so terrible and because His Majesty first cries were drawn by the thunder that that is what helped to inspire the name to Fedi or to Farai, the one to be feared or to be respected exactly. because the great trembling must have taken hold after that drought ah. and they hear the thunder roar mm. you know, like 10 yes, thousand sir. and the sky is oh, open you know, the darkness uh, you know the clouds mm. and you know because these are very uh, God fearing people you know the Ethiopian exactly. And, and these would have been seen as signs and portents of great Same. power, True. you know? So, uh, so it's, it's very important um, as we reflect to just mm -hmm. know that this um, is not a fantasy that we're talking about. We're talking no. about living history. Um, because remember, after that birth, His Majesty could have come and just do nothing, you know? That, uh, that is just the opening. Of a, of a story that would impact the world. So, uh, Mama Walete, I just want to open the floor again to yes, sir. Um, the eye, you know, uh, your thoughts. Yes, sir. Just, just before that, the Jasmine Kwasi. Yes, yes go, go forward. So, 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 this child having conquered death. Yes. Because we have to look at this child as a conqueror, as a babe, as a infant. From his first breath. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And was raised to life. It's not that life came and then he conquered. He conquered death. He's the only child that came from that womb mm, and survived. Yeah. So he's a conqueror of death a as bird. a babe. So can you imagine when he, 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 he's the conquering lion? The tribe of Judah. <laughs> yes, I. So, Lich the Farai conquered death and was raised to life July 23rd. 1892. Uh, yeah. That's one of the titles I give him. He survived out the womb of Yoshima Bet, you know? Mm. Yes. Because that was no easy task. No. Yeah. To, to survive, you know? Eight children birth, eight lives claimed, and then she'd per perish on the ninth, as I mean, on the tenth child, as we say. So that was no easy task, as you say. Conquering Lion. Uh, 40 days after given the name of the might and the power of the Trinity, his baptismal name, um, a name that he likely only, he knew because most of the people who were there at his childbirth perish. You know, a lot of his close uh, teachers, a lot of the, you know, Abba Samuel, uh, you know, Dr. Vitellian, a lot of the people who were present in his early days did not make it, you know, yeah. through, through the rain. So by the time he's revealed his name of Haile Selassie at the coronation, you know, it, it very well could have been a name that he alone there knew from that time because this is not a time where... According to Revelation, Haile. according to Revelation, so no man knew his name but himself and himself will reveal it. And I think it was the first time a baptismal name was used as a as a as a crown name. Okay. You know, because they say the baptismal name is your name that is written in the book of life. But his yes, majesty had it that his baptismal name became his true name. Hence he was not only was not only a baptismal name, but he manifested the traits of the might and power of the old of Trinity in the mm. Yes, and, and I think that's very important for young Rasses. I'll yeah. never forget as a young Ras at the Naya Bing House in, Russ, in Washington, D.C., an elder, you know, looked at her and said, you know, you never forget the mystical side of this tradition, you know, yes, regardless of all the education. Um, and different things you pursue, we always remember the mystic, you know, um, yes. tradition. And when we pair the history with the manifestation, you know, we see that great mystic because His Majesty did not have to be born on the first day of Leo, which is the lion, no. you know, that did not have to coincide. It could have been within the house or the second or the third day, you know, but all of these things line up, as you say, 1399 also marks the birth of uh, Zari Jacob, which is another um, great um, Ethiopian king. Yes. And, 
this this alignment of the stars is actually documented in the almanac. Yes, uh, so you can go and look and see that you know indeed these things did occur. Uh, you know, so all of that mystic in terms of the, the planetary alignment, uh, mm -hmm. you know, being born on the 23rd of July, which is the, the, the first day of Leo the lion, um, you know, no more lamb to the slaughter, but a lion that conquered the coming at the end of the drought. Even one of those things would have been enough to make this a fantastic story. But we <laughs> see that this alignment of all of these factors, you know what I mean, that 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 leads us um, to the birth of a baby boy. And I write in my book that no one could have even known, even dared, even though that he was that special, that he would change the earth forever. Because when we talk about the end of his throne, would, there would be no ending. The Lion of Judah flag now flies in every country on the planet Earth. You know, we see it at festivals we see people have it in their homes every nation creed so even though you know in ethiopia there's no longer it, it's not it's no longer a political flag it becomes a heretical no you know it's flown and, and his majesty said that the sacrifice of yeshua the almighty now dwell within the heart of mm -hmm. of i and i you know what i mean so that this now shows us that Haile Selassie now dwell within the hearts. And we become the, that, that manifestation to do his work. We are called by his name, Rastafari. Um, and we are rising. And I, it's an honor. Mama Walete, please, you know, jump in here. Because you know I'm long-winded, you know. So you just have to... Yes, <laughs> yes I, you know, I and I, I and I know the glory of... Um, Katamawi Haile Selassie, you know, coming into the coming into the trod um, and learning of his majesty's glory and really, you know, cultivating and pre-loving a relationship with I and I um, father and, and, and getting a full overstanding of the glory of Katamawi, of the person, of his majesty and who he is and and I see every time without fail that there is no end, indeed, no end to his reign, no seal up, you know, not, not in this universe or any universe. It is an eternal um, reign, you know, for Iva, all nations will bow and crown him king of kings and hail him. Katamawi Haile Selassie the first. So, you know, when I and I have these reasonings, it is very important for I and I to declare the divinity of his majesty and to really help the youths to understand how I and I hail a living job. Because it's it's a source of confusion for a lot of ones. They don't understand. You know, Ras Ivai gave a very clear I story there a moment ago, really documenting the I blocked about all of the stars aligned and sealing with this glory at the birth of his majesty. And it's important that Rastafari youth today really understand the why and the how, you know, because this is not what the rest of the world says. You know, they say that you know, it's uh, blasphemous or, you know, for, for I and I to hail and give glory, you know, to his majesty. But I and I know that his majesty reigns and stands triumphant. And I and I know that I and I are on the, the righteous path. And, on, you know, in, in this, this is the, the heights of Iris is to be able to hail a living Jah. And I saw that the ancient Nubians and the Kushites deified man and deified woman. And I, and I read the scriptures and I read the history and I, and I see the prophecy that speaks of this. And I can't turn a blind eye and I have to acknowledge the glory and the divinity of his imperial majesty. And I, and I have to make sure that I and I are spreading that glory so that there is indeed no end 
to the to the glory and to this truth, you know. And I stand in the truth, and I and I give things thanks and eyes, you know, yeah. for us, for I, because it has kept all of I and I, even those that don't know that they're being kept by this glory. They are indeed being kept because His Majesty is merciful and non-partial, you know, and all of His children are benefactors of his glory, you know, so we give thanks. And, and uh, Africa, and you, you, see, you see, the jazz now, I must let me come here, because when we look back in time, remember Yahshua came, yeah? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. he came, came from the womb of Mariam, a physical woman, yeah? Same. Now, mm -hmm. we're saying, if these people who try to ridicule us because we see God in man, if they were living in the time of Yahshua the Nazarene, they would have been the same people telling us that we are stupid to call mm -hmm. um, the carpenter's son, Mary's son, that he is, is this God in flesh or um, the mm -hmm. son of God. They would have ridiculed. They have been ridiculing us now just the same way they ridiculed the Nazarenes who were with Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they did not see the physical. So today, when we are saying here is the physical person, these people are saying no, God cannot be in flesh. No, the, the, if they were living in the time of Christ, they would have said the same thing. But mm -hmm. two thousand odd years after, they are still looking at a man in flesh who walked in, in who, who grew up in Nazareth, took refuge in Egypt. And all we are talking about a man. Now mm -hmm. today we are talking about a physical man from the same lineage, the same mm -hmm. Davidic lineage. Yeah, mm -hmm. they said um, mm -hmm. the stars came up, heralded Christ's birth. If you, if if we, when we check history, Hylis comet, Hylis comet came in 1892 in mm -hmm. the constellation at the birth of Isaac the first. When we read David Talbot's book. Silver Jubilee, he wrote that Isla Selassie I was said to be born under a fortunate star and was regarded as a prodigy. So even as a child, there were so many um, um, things that coincide with what they said about the, the Yahshua, the Nazarene, back then. Yeah? And, 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 and even Timothy White, he continued in his book to say that they, they marveled at the knowledge he possessed because he was telling the priests about the visit of Sheba to Solomon and he was describing yeah. how the room, the palace was adorned and the kind mm. of curtains that hung on the, on, on the windows and he was describing everything as if he was there. The priests were frightened of him just as all. The priest then in the time of Yahshua was, was marveled at the, the, the works of Christ, even at 13, 12, 13. So the priests in Ethiopia were, were in awe at, the, at this young Tafari. And remember, even at age seven, when, when Emperor Menelik saw him for the first time, Menelik knew this is, this is not a country boy thing, you know. He must be in the palace. This is royalty. Uh, Makonim, listen. Your son can't go back to Harar. I need him to stay here in the palace. I remember when Menelik saw him having conversation with his French advisors. Menelik was astonished yes. of his vast knowledge. Even the Europeans that came to the palace and saw this young prince, they wrote about him. His yes. culture, his, his, char his charisma, his characteristic. When they, when one even offered him a gold watch. And the way Tafara looked at him and said to him, no, I can't receive um, a gift from you. I, I have to get consent from my, my parents. And, and, you know, like many could have looked over and said, oh, yeah, you can take it. And he took the gift, passed it to someone else to keep it for me. And it's like the gift wasn't anything. This, this was not the mind of a child. This was a young man with a, a, a knowledge beyond youth. You know, so let's, when they talk to youth, we say, youth, let's, let's read about the young Tafari, how he yeah. was. Yeah? Let's, let's, let's talk about this Christ consciousness, because 
as Rastafari sons and ayatas, we should be striving to attain this same level of, of, of Christ consciousness, um, yes. which is exemplified in the life and, and liberty of his imperial majesty. Um, right. and I think this is one of the reasons that the Almighty live or take on the physical as instruction. Um, as an example to Ayala. Uh, yes, uh, what that what that looks like. So I really want, you know, for, for I and I youth, you know, how can we apply? And this is why it's important to have these conversations um, so that we know the character of a young Lich Safari so that our youths them can be modeled. We can create an education system. Uh, we need a Naya Bingi curriculum. Um, yeah. We have a lot of work to do because just like the Catholic have his school um, where they inculcate their values to their young people, I and I should have our own curriculum as Rastafari, um, Naya Bingi in particular since we are Naya Bingi here, um, but Rastafari in general. Um, and, and I want to just bring it forward to how can we, you know, as three ones that are versed in this knowledge how can we bring this forward to the youth so what what ideas can we bring forward in terms of um you know uh things that we can do to ensure that this history um is cemented in the minds of our young people you see they just not um some ones might not know when i went to ethiopia in 92 i wrote a journal titled Centenary Track. It covered the journey from the UK into Ethiopia and returned to UK. It covered a nice day-to-day um, -day journal as to what took place while we were there. Later on, I continued to write because I figured more or less that writing and passing it on to others, my biggest problem was getting things published because later on, in my early days, I wrote a book titled Why I Am What I Am. Mm -hmm. And it covered, why do I praise Emperor Ayala Selassie first? This is a book I wrote because when I, when I found my, my, my empress to be, and the parents found out that I was talking to, oh my gosh, their beautiful daughter. They took her from the, the hills where I, I went to do farming and sent her to Kingston. So I said to her, give me a book and a pen. And I started to write. The title was Why I Am What I Am. So it covered the divinity of His Majesty, the dreadlocks covenant, and idle liberty. That book was never published, but those who got a, to read a, a handwritten copy, it brought so many ones to the field. Later on, I said, wow, I need to write a book I can come from Ethiopia and did the, the centenary trial, which was a book mm -hmm. that was published in limited copies. The brother Miguel Franks to redo it, but it has not yet been done. But I wrote another book that's, that, that was geared for the children. And I think I need to go back in, in, in thoughts as I lost the original unwritten copy because it, spoke, it, it speaks of the birth of Lich the Farad. And, it, and, and it, at the end of the book, there is a hundred questions. I did it in the centenary year also. A hundred questions for the centenary year. So when a child reaching, let's say a simple age of the reading and understanding, they would be able to read the book. Very simple. Yeah, Lich the Farai Makanen was born July 23rd, 1892. Next line, his father's name was Ras Makanen, governor of Arar, his mother's name. So the questions would go, in what year was Lich the Farai born? So we, we ask parents, after the child has read the book, See to it that they don't go back to the book to find the answers. They do the answers from memory. 100 questions. I think booklets like those can help yes. in a significant way to get the yes. youths to, to understand the history. Part of my assignment is that every bingy year about, I try to present a questionnaire. I, yes. I remember the first questionnaire. In, in 19, um, in the, at the 67th anniversary of the coronation, an uh, elder said to me, 97. Why do you give me a test when you never tell me before? It's too sudden. I said, Bongo Ayman, you mean we are celebrating coronation from 1930? I know I'm 97. Why you tell me it's too sudden? He said, Come on now, the questions are all about coronation. 
Mm-hmm. But you know, because we 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 know about it, but we don't store it in our DNA. We don't yes. store it from memory yes. chip. So simple question. You know, name the seven ornaments of the coronation. You know, give me three psalms that was read at the coronation. Yeah, those, those are some of the questions we would have asked. Where the coronation ceremony took place. You know, so part of it now, the jasmine is that. You have done, I've not read your book, but I know it's a powerhouse. I listened to you the other day, um, standing up for the, the integrity of his body. Yes. I smiled, yes. broke, I said, Yes, yes. that was my nail yes. it. You know, because I was on point, yeah, I was, yeah, I was giving reasoning from, from a position of knowledge, you know, yes. in a nice, relaxed manner. And I, I saw myself and I smiled and I said, Yes. This is what we want. We need Rastafari to, to study His Majesty in a practical, realistic way. Because we don't have to talk things where, you know, fabricate things to show His power. You know, what He did physically on earth is enough to, to exemplify and to show that, yes, here is the God man, God king, as J.A. Rogers said, as of Eilis Selassie, it can almost be said, behold. The perfect man. Yes. So yeah. we can look at the things that he has done that has made him the perfect man, the God man, the God king, the lion of Judah, earth rightfully. Yes. That is what I love about Rastafari is that you, you don't have to make up anything. You know, I don't no. need anybody to validate I and I spirituality. I just needed to accept the historical facts. And yeah. we're good, you know. That's that's what I love about this tradition, um, because you cannot deny the work. The work speak for itself. Uh, Mama Walete, um, please add as, a, as an educator, someone who works in education, the way forward, you know, because we don't want to just be in the history. Um, the eyes of mother, um, yeah. raised Rastafari youth, um, moving forward. What do we look like futuristic? Yes, I think um, I think the Zoom platform is a good platform. I think I and I need to meet maybe once a month with Rastafari children globally, and you know have a a, a session where they, you know, do some pre work, put something out for them to read, and then they come forward with, you know, like a Q and A session, and each time they learn about something different. You know, one time it could be the birth, the next time it could be the coronation, you know, and next time it can be the marriage supper, and next time it could be Wolo, Tegre, just all of the things, the foundation of what they need. Sometimes it could be high science, you know, within Ethiopia, and next time we could deal with law, you know, we can just even deal with, um, what you would call um, diplomacy. Another time we teach diplomacy. Really just preparing the youth to compete on a global stage and to be firm within their liberty, to love their liberty, to love their covenant, to know the importance of eating right, to know the importance of exercise. You know, Mm -hmm. not really giving them anything in the form of doctrine but really just giving them the reasons for doing things in a particular way, yes. you know, keeping them inspired, keeping them strong. And when I, and I can taking them to the continent, you know, yes. talking about repatriation, talking about the importance of resettling on the continent and the tra- being a part of the new trajectory for Africa. Yes. You know, the, the new race oh. mandate. I think all of those things are very important. But I love the way that... We have, to include, we have to include some economics into it. Economics, yes. Yeah. That, that's what we, have have to, we must include, yeah? Oh, yeah. We have to teach our children at a very high, uh, high level, you know? To um, teach them at a very I, high I, level. One of the reasons that I established the Lion Voice Network is so that we can uh, get the message out there that we can have uh, a vehicle to tell our own stories because mm-hmm. I realize that 
we don't control our narrative as Rastafari in the public sphere. We have to go on other platforms or there are a few platforms or you know, there's no one that's really out here that's uh, pre presenting a vision of where we're going, you know, yeah. in terms mm -hmm. of building of Zion. And I think that is the task that we have been tasked with now is building an alternative to Babylon. We know we burn Babylon, that's fine. What is our alternative? Um, because if we burn Babylon and we don't have the alternative, we will burn up with Babylon because there's nothing for yeah. I and I to inherit. So when we talk about food security, we talk about water security, we talk about housing, food, clothes, shelter, we talk about the hungry fed, naked clothes, sick, nourish, age, protected, the infants, cared for, the ignorant, instructed, all of these things that we say as a Rastafari creed. They have an economic, um, mm -hmm. the yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and yeah. do we have that alternative system or ecosystem to Babylon in reality right now? And I think that is the work for our generation. We can all we can also invest. I think investment is a, is a good vibe because the eye is wearing Ras Ivy's crown. Yes, Ras Ivy's crown sits in the African American Museum in DC. I mean, when you think about the creation of those crowns and that knitwear, when you think about beekeeping, having an apiary, and yes. and, and and honey, I mean, sometimes it's just little investment because those are bases. I mean. What happens to that knitwear when Ras Ivy no longer makes it? I mean, that's known the world over. You know, the Chinese try a thing, but them can't touch you. Them can't touch your work. Mighty, mighty works. And I mean, we're talking what? About 30 years, 35 years of, of these works, more than three decades. Exactly. You know, the eye just keeps reinventing the eye self. Sometimes maybe on the Zoom platform, the jazz match. And I could have a guest speaker because one strong Ras I, I I do crochet, but I do very basic crochet. When you think about the machines that are required to do that craft that the eye does and the designs, I mean, that's a whole session right there. Letting the yeah. youths know that, you know, if, if you're not a scientist and you're not a mathematician, you're not a doctor, you're not a pilot, you're not a lawyer, maybe you are a crafter or yeah. you know you create things you mm -hmm. know you, or a trade and, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, a trade mm -hmm. and i can imagine that youths with the mindset they have now will take that craft work to a whole nother level mm -hmm. will take it to a whole nother level they'll be adding pieces to the machine that makes it yeah to do <laughs> things differently put a coil on this side to introduce another color without changing the yarn. I mean, you know, yeah. that the, the, um, yeah. the opportunities are really endless. So sometimes yeah. it's just a matter of investment. You know, the Jijasmat Kwasi, the eye can come and speak to them about law. Yes. You know, I, I mean, there are so many different ways that we can inspire our children. I, I do a program like that at the school where I have a whole career day vibe and I tell the youths when they select the career path that they want to choose I tell them all the requirements to get from point A to point B okay. if you want this is the job you want to do this is the education that's required these are the experiences that you have to have and I do projections 20 years from now this is what the salary for this will look like this is okay. the kind of money you will be generating when you do this. And then you give them a whole blueprint. This is what housing looks like. This is what transportation looks like. How well does your idea for your future career fit into what is required to live in that time? You know, two, two yeah. decades now when you're older. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we can use this very same platform maybe once per month, the yeah. line for can have the youth vibration, you know, Ras Ivy come forward. Even the harps, Ivy, who lick harp like eyeball? Who lick <laughs> harp like my bread shred? I mean, I heard your youth licking harp at Mama Fire. 
And I said, okay, he looks like Ivil and him lick harp like eyeball. I mean, these are all things that can be taught. When last you hear good Peter, you know? Yeah, we, we have, have to, to, we have to standardize the training. Instruments, yes. Yes, yes. The importance of the instruments. You have honey. I, I think young. about it, Naya Bingi Academy, you know? Naya Bingi Where Academy. the youth them could, could be learning in their cocky uniform. Learning. And they could be, you know, learning. You spend two years upon the do good alone or three years upon the do good just learning the science of the do good, you know? Before you that's, how, that's how the youth gets to learn it. From the time the them can sit upright, them come a bingy and them have a harp and them a lick, do good. Yes. I do am good. My eight, my eight do month good. old granddaughter. Yes. When I said kettle, I see her old in a one, two. One, two, eight months, eight months wow. that I marveled at her old in a one, two, at eight months. Well, the so item has some harvest, so that's to be expected. The environment that the child grows up into, because yes. I've never taught my son how to play a repeater. I just Woo! take them from December. Woo! I've <laughs> never taught any of my grandchildren how to play a funde or a repeater. But they goes to Bingy, and sometime when someone says, Rasaipa, you need to come see this. Because this was a grandson I wouldn't believe would have played a repeater so skillfully one morning. Yeah. That uh, Rasaipa, come and look, come and see Malik. And he was there, and he was perfect like that. But there are others who might not have been grown up in an environment where the bass is, the funda is, the repeater is. It's like a youth who grew up seeing his father playing a bass guitar. That young man will be inclined to play a bass guitar because he sees father with it practicing all the time. But when dad leave at that time, he went check it up and start bumps up new strings. So it's what they, we provide in our environment for the children. It's like a mother, she's pregnant and she's playing Naya Bingi. What do you think the child is doing in the womb? Dancing some Naya Bingi, listening to the one two beat. So when that child comes from the womb, that one two is already planted in the child. And the doctors will tell you if you're pregnant, be positive. Yeah? The kind of music you listen to, you're molding the child into the womb with that kind of positive energy. Mm, so yes. listen to positive music. So, you know, in, in terms of teaching wants to play, like someone's in come, just like, right, oh, we have a class, we play drums. And I said, Bridget, and I said, listen, if you look at my youths, my grandchildren, I have never gone with a class to tell them how to funde or how to. I mean, sometimes you might see, they might want to leave from the, the funde to the repeater and not master it. You say, okay, keep the funde, just keep playing the funde, listen to the repeater and choose your notes. And then there is none that I've seen that don't master the repeat. Talk about the, talk about the princesses. <laughs> the princesses can play a repeater, but they, they, they haven't got the chance at being to do so. But when they are at home, and you see from Isilia, Ibiba, Ilivia, Isani on the repeater, I said, wow, well, it's all in them, but they know that, okay, when I go to Bingi, that's it. It's a priestly thing, and that's yeah, yeah. not my part. So, but they know, they know it like that. Mm. So we just have to continue to, to ensure, and the classes is important at Anaya Bingi. This Bingi coming up, we, it, it will go about nine days, because it's wow. summer time, everyone looking forward to Bingi and all. And I heard that a number of students coming from overseas to be at Bingi too. So I'm, 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 I'm not, uh, they'll be there next Friday, not this Friday, the next Friday coming. A number of students from the USA will be on the bingy ground. So, you know, we may have to there have a class to, to, to let these children from outside the Jamrock get a taste of Rastafari, what the Naya bingy is about and all. So, you know, the teachers better be ready. The students are coming. So it's a continuation of that we need for our community and, and using Lich Tafari as an example to our youths. Because as, as, as His Majesty would have said, you know, as a young man, he didn't have time for play. 
you know, he was so busy. I mean, you know, as, as a young prince, he was in the courts of Menelik, seven, eight coming up. And, you know, by age 12, he was, he was, you know, at the jazz mark and going on into, into, you know, um, being governor. There's no, there was no time for child's play. Yeah. So, and at the same time, he was still a young man, but he was so focused on leadership, leadership skills, leadership qualities. Yeah. So we just have to ensure that, you know, we, we use his example because his example was very exceptional, you know. And, you know, this is something we can just show to our youths that, yes, this is Lich Tafari, this is Rastafari. And as he advanced, you know, his knowledge and his ascension to the throne, you know, impacted Ethiopia, impacted the world, you know. So, you know, these are just some of the things we can highlight and show and use his majesty. Yes. Than an example, than the example of Kadamal Yaili Selassie. And, that, and that's the eyes example, Ras Ivai, in the eyes young days. And that's Ras Dijaz Machkwasi's example in his youthful days having fun but not really having time for childish things always thinking about leadership always thinking about the greater good always working very hard a lot of the eyes work was done in the very early days of the eye within the movement when you think about the chance that you wrote and coming forward with the crochet i mean the honey keeping i mean the beekeeping now is in the latter years the eyes work is the very early days in the movement Mm -hmm. You didn't have time for childish yeah. things. It's true. It's the same with yeah. I. It's the same yeah. with I. Tw tw yeah. 12 years old, seventh grade, and, and, and already knowing his majesty. And, you yes, know, by eight, eight, 16 years old, Eitel. And by 18 yeah. years old, Covenant. Naya Bingy, yeah. 19 years old. That's not having time for childish things. It's yeah. I. That is definitely on a trajectory that's because I and I observed very early on the person of Katamawi. I and I overstood Lich Tafari. I and I, you know, some of it is innate. You just get on that journey and you just trod through and before you know it, 50 years have passed. Uh, is the I coming up on almost 45 years in the movement, pretty much, right, for the wow, I? Wow, wow. That's, a, that's very powerful. I'm concerned that we're not seeing a... Sorry, go ahead. I'm we actually seek the creator in the days of our youth. In the youth. In the days of our youth. I, I am remember yes. school, 14 years old, when teacher asked us to write a country we want to visit. My essay was the only essay that wanted to visit an African country, Ethiopia. Yes. And, and, the, and the teacher questioned my, my marks instead of gra correcting grammar errors, was questioning everything I said. I want to visit the land of Ethiopia, the land where God loved to be. Question signs like crazy in reading. As if to ask me, who tell me that God loved to be in Ethiopia? And I said, sir, but you have not graded my essay. My essay was just filled with questions. Because my mind was totally different from the other students who want to go to America, to go to Paris, to yeah. go to England. With their yeah. chosen few, Irit. From <laughs> early Iowa, cherished chosen few. He just must trust. He said he's never heard of the chosen many. I, the that, cho that's, chosen that's my, that's my thought. No, early. I never chant the chosen many chant. So we 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 know. Um, I'm concerned though that we're not seeing as many youths um, with that passion. No. The liberty, and this is why I've been pushing for the institutionalization of I and I chart because I think we have to be more intentional, more systematic yeah. in terms of transmitting the information because uh, yeah. we don't have many Ras Ivies who studied at the foot of a bongo water. No. And you know, um, you know, even I and I youths, you know, um, are not getting the same chart that Iman had chatting through the Naya Bingi House in Washington, DC with ones yeah. like Ross Iris and Brother Jack and Ross Iris Lion and Mama Bubbles and Nana Farika and Ross Pidow and you know we can keep going on and on. Ross Marcus, 
um, these youths are not going to get that. Same, Pod Jack. Yeah, Pod Jack. These youths are not going to get that same experience. And I think our generation, you know, which I, I deem the generation of them that seek the face, because I was born in 77 when the 2 7 clash. Um, His Majesty was not on the throne in Ethiopia when I was born. Ayman and Ayman generation had to seek the face <laughs> of the Mosai through books, you know what I mean, through documentary, through, you know, we literally had to seek him because we couldn't turn on a TV and see His Majesty because they had hidden the, the, the whole reign from a generation. So mm -hmm. uh, I realized um, you know, when I had my epiphany of who Haile Selassie I, um, is and remains, I realized very quickly that he was establishing institutions, you know, yeah. from he um, inherited Harar, you know, reforming the military, um, you know, setting up a military barracks, um, ensuring that the military had a standardized salary so that they wouldn't have to raid the local farmers for their goat and their sheep. You know, so very early as a teenager, he starts to set up institutions. So that that Christ consciousness, you know, um, that organized, centralized, I might see that our generation, our elders took the brutality. Um, they were prophetic. They they prophesied the freedom of the of the herb which would be the healing of the nation. They prophesied um, the Aital lives. They prophesied repatriation, um, the return of the stolen to Africa. All of these things are now happening and unfolding. Um, our elders, though, however, did not get a chance to really strengthen the institutions because of the state brutality, because of the survival that they had to endure um, I do believe that that has been bequeathed to I and I generation. I'm a little younger than the item, but um, yeah. I'm still, I think the item are still Generation X. Is that correct? I know I am. I don't know if, um, as I, if I... Yes. say it again. Is there a Generation X within that generation or the baby boom generation? <laughs> no, I'm baby boom. I think I'm a baby boomer. There's a baby boom. Yes. Okay, okay. What what is the age for the, the baby boomer? What is it? Let me see. Um let me tell the uh, Mama Waleta is a top researcher, you know. So anytime we get Mama Waleta at the platform, you know, she <laughs> you have to dig up the research. Yeah, this is um baby boomers. Um, age group is they're currently between 57 and 75. So, no, I'm actually not a baby boomer. Okay, I would be generation X, uh, so you, yes, I'm X, yes. So, the baby and, boomers uh, are um, 1956 to 64. The AI is baby boomer, um, and there are 71.6 million baby boomers born between 46 and 64. So that would be Ras Ivai. When, when was the I born, Ras Ivai? 58. Uh, six, my 65th was just, just on the had first a 65th. Okay, okay, okay. Wow. Yes, so the I would be the baby boom generation, and then I and I would be the generation X. So the I yeah. was the, the I got to see His Majesty on the throne for a time yeah. um, mm -hmm. and experience that, that glory. and. When we look at His Majesty reign, it also coincides with the rising of black people around the planet. You know, the wow. civil rights, the black power movement, um, you know, all of these, these great um, people, great men rose in the earth during that, that time when His Majesty was on the throne. Um, right. I want to talk a little bit before we seal up, um, because the time is gliding, the, the global scene um, during the birth, because we want to also set the stage that Ethiopia at this time, 1892, was the only independent African nation. We know that Liberia was under U.S. control, the American Colonization yeah. Society. Exactly. exactly. A foothold in Liberia. So really, mm -hmm. Ethiopia alone was, was independent at the time. 
Um, this was the year that the, the capital um, of Benin also fell. The, the, the Dahomey Empire was subdued in 1892. Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, one of the, the, the sub-tribes of the Yoruba fell in 1892. Um, there was a, a conflict in the Congo. You know, all of these places in Africa, we were suffering uh, disastrous blows. The Ashanti had fell already. Um, on the Gold Coast, um, the mighty empires, um, you know, of ancient repute all over the African continent were falling under the European use of the Gatling gun, the modern armaments of warfare. Um, Ethiopia was an island of independence in this. Um, speak to, to, to the global scene. Uh, we can start with the Iris Ivy, then we go to Mama Walete. Well, we give thanks for the advent of his imperial majesty, you know, because here, here comes a, a bright mind now, seeing Emperor Menelik as the, the emperor then and, and growing up in the palace and, 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 and after Menelik's um, demise. And, you know, and we still have to make one realize that it was not an easy pathway for the young Tafara. Because he came up and had the traditionalist in there with a traditional mindset that really never want change. And then he must be a balance between the traditional mindset and he must look forward to see Ethiopia on a different pathway because he see how the world was shaping. He see how the colonizers who did engulf and, and, and check aboard the African continent with all kind of colonial boundaries. And, and he saw that, listen, these guys not just comfortable having we as an island of independence. You know. These guys is coming. So even when we must say, you are now, we need to for, for join the League of Nations. You know, there were many Ethiopians who were opposed to it. But he felt that, yes, this is the way forward. We have to safeguard this spot of ground, this, this 3,000 year old independence. Don't just let us sit back and take it for granted. Modern armaments are out there. The man just look and say, Ethiopia is traditionally a, 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 a victorious empire. Them say, no, man, them look up their foot, man. They nah, man, we are going to show them what the might of guns can do. So his majesty said, the only way to protect that was, yeah, we have to join among them. Yeah, we have to enter this league because it, um, it, 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 the, the Europeans are coming. We even go as far as to point out who they would be in by going to. Italy and sign all a treaty of friendship with the man he knew would come. Sign a treaty of friendship with Mussolini, preparing Ethiopia for the breakers. I have to bind up this new China. I see more coming up. Yes. So I will sign this treaty with him. And even when he must say to him, say, You sure you're not come in the my territory? All he must say, No, they're going to have a treaty of friendship, but his majesty knew ahead of time what he was about. But the, 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 the traditionalists didn't believe what Ayal Selassie was doing. So His Majesty set the tone now that even when the war start, what if Ayal Selassie I did not have Ethiopia as a member of the League? The voice of Ethiopia could not be heard to, to rain down pressure, international pressure on the fascists. And we see His Majesty rule how he, how he skillfully you know, manifested his work and, and gain for Ethiopia and in, uh, independence that continue up to today. And, and, and he rightly said to them on Victory Day that what if Ethiopia did, did, did succumb to the might of Italy, the entire continent would remain under subhuman bondage. So we are saying that the work of Kadamari, the work of Lichta Farai, that child been born 23rd of July, came for a specific reason that today we can see an uh, 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 African Union, an uh, organization of African unity becoming an African Union. And, and the severe, you know, the, 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 the things that were set in those OAU criteria, that things that must be manifested. All AU have to do now is just look at what was done and what is not yet done. The independence of Africa, the African Development Bank, the African you know, united military in, in defense of Africa itself. His Majesty played such a significant role for Africa. 
and the world over because we remember even when he was at the league he might defend all small nations whether them black or white him said a big bully time for done you know the millions the billions he has spent on military arsenals spend it for the betterment of mankind we just say, mm-hmm. what if the world had listened to Isla Selassie the first? Mm-hmm. The world today would have been a better place, you know. And, and I and I as children, we just have to just emulate his work and, and, and continue his work and, and examine the way, even in adversity, he took time, he was patient, because he was patient with those traditional listeners. When he yeah. brought the first year plane to Ethiopia, he get the view. Yeah, because this is a, a Satan instrument. Where am I going with that when we have Camille and ass back? You know, and his majesty said, all right, let me show you Abba, how important it is. We are going over to Harare and we are going to pick up Abba Samuel over there. And um, I am going to. And I'm going to return with Abba. And look, Abba is there a couple hours. And they understand and say, oh, yes, your majesty will see what you're saying. His majesty said, no, the pattern of gas have to be reprinted. He said, no, yeah. your majesty, you have to lose, it will lose the, the, the essence of the word. He said, no, no, make sure you. In, in the running way, no, he said, no, stupid. No, he said, all right, let me show you. All right, yeah. copy the first line. All right, Abba, you read from the original, then you read from the copy. Is it the same words? And he's getting people to understand because he knew where their mindset was. And it's the same problem we as young youth had with our elders in the way forward. Because they were thinking on a line where we said, no, you know, we need to up this thing. Look at what we're talking now. We are on Zoom. The mm-hmm. elders, most back then, were not exposed to a platform like this. Today, we are doing the... the, the the Naya Bingi guidelines revision. And we have Naya Bingi representatives from all over the world on Sunday coming together on a platform, you know, like a, a, a ecumenical gathering, dissecting the original guidelines and trying to put it together, just like His Majesty would have done to the Constitution of 1931 and then 1955 mm-hmm. and then 1974. So His Majesty mm-hmm. has laid down all these landmarks to I and I, I and I now to continue to be on that pathway and take Rastafari into the 21st century. The greatness. Yeah, yeah, man. Time is now. Um, I would add that His Majesty is the first head of state to address an international um, body um, that speaks to the League of Nations, setting a precedent that is now standard and par for the course we see world leaders addressing international forums at all times but when yes. his majesty did it that was not the norm it was your foreign minister yes. Yes. who would make those addresses so he was the first and he was the first that was coming from off of the field of battle so he was giving a first-hand account of the atrocities that he himself had witnessed um, as the head of state as the head of the military um, so it was a very powerful, you know, he shall smite them with the double-edged sword that come from his mouth, which is the word of truth. If you want, take it from a biblical um, version. You know, we have a lot of I and I that don't like the Bible, none at all. Um, however, as <laughs> um, stated earlier, you know, there were Psalms re- uh, read at the coronation. Ethiopia is very biblical place, so... You know, it, it's very difficult when, when the king is called the conquering line of the tribe of Judah to separate it, you know. And when he say he glory in the Bible, it's very difficult to separate that part of the the, the history. So, and then... The jazz man, the jazz man. Not to cut, but I must say this. In our youth, 12, 13, at high school, when you had your principal, your academia coming up against you, those who have studied theology, and come up against you declaring Rastafari. What do you think we could use to defeat them? Mm -hmm. The Bible, it was like a two-edged sword. When we show our (laughs) principal the first day, we turn up with dreadlocks and them ask, why you wear your hair like this? And we draft the number six and tell them to read it. You send them book of the word L-O-C-K-S, the principal could not pronounce L-O-C-K-S. She was baffled. She had never seen that in the Bible before. 
<laughs> when we start showing them that the old Philistine tire with Ethiopia, this man was born there. When we start showing them that he will be a king of kings and a lord of lords and a conquering lion of Judah. And these are titles bestowed upon Emperor Al Selassie I. Teachers were baffled. Students from the Interschool Christian Fellowship could not win the battle of words when we are talking about Al Selassie I. And it had to be from a biblical standpoint because that, what is, that is what they believe in. So we use the same book that they believe in. Sometimes them take the Bible and spin it the cover. And we say, no, no, man, it's the same King James Version. You think I will write that one? Yeah? It's the same version that you have. Is this, it is, is your, sometimes we say, no, give me your Bible. Because in the check said the Bible we are read from, and we write the words, it's the same thing. So in terms of scripture, I can say, we have used scripture. We went to theological college at the University of the West Indies. Myself, brother Miguel, my brother, and the unity of I and I went to theological college at the University of the West Indies. And the doctor who taught these pastors to be ran out, pack up his pile of books, and ran out when we started to declare Haile Selassie from a biblical standpoint. He ran out and, 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 go, and leave him. He said, I'm not staying here to be brainwashed by the Rastafarians. And even when his fellow doctor was saying, no, no, doctor, come back. He said, no, 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 no. I'm not staying here to be brainwashed by the Rastas. And he ran away. And we said to the student, if your tutor had the truth in him, he would have stayed here and defend the truth. And they applauded. They agreed. <laughs> <laughs> so we know the power of prophecy. And, and, and in Rastafari, I cannot tell, I always ask someone, tell me, how you break down the divinity of his majesty to a youngster who, are, who is in the church? How can you break it down that he will overstand clearly the position you hold with Isla Selassie? You have to be in the Bible. And his majesty... His Majesty, when our father, Isla Selassie the first, speaks of the Bible, and he's, he's our almighty creator, and he speaks so, so um, profound about scripture and the importance of scripture, a cause of infinite comfort, then who am I to deny that the prophecy have its place? That is, yes. that, that is I'm on sound. Um, Mama Olete, uh, talk to us about the, the global scenery around the bird and, and the thoughts and then we'll seal up from there. Yes, I yes I at that time, you know, in um all of the different Caribbean countries in the United States and you know we had people really, really seeing the pride and the glory of what was taking place in Ethiopia. You know, we had Marcus Garvey you know, reasoning at the time and look to Africa for the crowning of a, of a black um, king. You know, that, that, that was the greatness of the African at that time. We had come out of so much oppression, you know, so much oppression. You would have, uh, in the United States, they would have abolished or said they abolished chattel slavery in uh, 1865. Yes. That would leave uh, 35, uh, not even 35, because you're going to 92. So that's uh, about, what, 27 years. 27 years prior um, would have been the um, abolishment of chattel slavery. So, yes. you know, Af African people and Black people within the diaspora were looking for reasons to be proud of their African self. Yes. Um, we're looking for sources of pride and, you know, the birth of his majesty and it, it, Ethiopia did that for them. You know, it gave a sense of pride, a sense of worth and a sense of hope, you know, really for ones and ones Ethiopia and remains a beacon of hope, you know, for I and I, the Africans in the, in the West and even continental um, Africans, you know, so that time you know, when his majesty come forward and fulfill that prophecy, that 500 year old prophecy from 1399, you know, it was really a source of strength globally. And some ones don't even know that that's what his majesty did, you know, for the world. 
But His Majesty didn't just come for Rastafari people and didn't just come for African people. His Majesty has changed the earth and changed the trajectory of the way forward. He indeed is I and I savior, he's I and I salvation. His words are the words that I and I live by, why I and I can stand up in the Gideon, you know, today. You know, if not for his majesty, there go I and I, you know? That's the thing. Give thanks, give thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just to tie in with what the, the Empress just said, he did not just come for Africa and Africans. Because remember, at the league, he said, when I spoke 27 years ago, when I spoke in Geneva, I spoke then to and for the conscience of the world. Yeah. So we know broad His Majesty's work has been impacting the globe. And I tell the eye, his name, as the prophet says, his name shall be continued as long as the sun and the moon endure it throughout all generations. And, and that is why we are here to continue to fulfill that prophecy that the word sound continue. Um, I want to thank both of the item. Uh, this was short notice, but was inspired by His Imperial Majesty. I, I said there are no two ones better for this reasoning oh, than the item. So I'm honored to have both of the item on this platform. Um, this is the second time I told once to get used to Mama Walete. I try to fulfill um, um, I and I words. So on Ras Iva, I'm just, just yeah. time I'm gonna be sitting down with the eyes. Oh so man. The, the lion talk and get the history because um, Ras right. Iva is a bridge and was set history in the island of Jamaica, you know, from high okay. school. Days. It's such a globally, globally. Yeah. And globally. Global. So we, we definitely want to make sure we, we can get a chance to tell that story. Um, so any any final words with that? The prophet, the young prophet, yes. Yes. all right, blessings. These are our youth. Greetings, greetings. Greetings. Blessings. Blessings, blessings and love, Rastafari. Um, so... Uh, Mama Olete, just give us your 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 final words. Um, I know family calls. They came right on time. Yes, uh, you know, words. You know, looking forward to a mighty, you know, one hundred and thirty first celebration, Iowa. Looking forward to the Nyabingi Isis chanting three lights. You know and giving glory to his majesty. Looking forward to the little programming and I have in place. Right. Yeah, for the youths and, you know, just, just working in the trying line and being obedient, you know, to obey is better than sacrifice. So we give thanks. Adam, we give hide thanks. Give give thanks. Give thanks. Right. give thanks for the eye as always. And as we say, we're honored by the eye presence. Ras Ivai, final songs. Look forward to another great gathering. Um, give thanks to Jasmine for having invited I and I. And, you know, I, I know there are other great sons and daughters out there that, you know, um, the lion, the, 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 the lion roar will always find them when the right time comes. You know, yes. uh, we know there are some isleful angels across the board, across the globe. But we give thanks, guys. I will give thanks to our tenure coming in the days of our youth. And embracing, and we give thanks, and we give thanks to the ones who have embraced this faith for decades and maintain it in a nice way and walk in the footsteps. I just advise all I and I sons and daughters, these platforms can be used and better serve us, you know, than some of the things I'm seeing on these platforms today. You know, these platforms should be used to educate I and I people, to touch base with I and I people globally, you know, and to educate I and I people. You know, and I see sometimes ones go off on a tangent on these platforms, trying to, to tear down each other, while the, these platforms should be used to educate um, ones in different regions. You know, that's why I'm, I'm pleased to see the platforms that are used educationally, you know, because the tabernacle space is a small space. It's just geographical to each region. But if we, like now, Look how many thousands, millions will view this conversation 
And if we were at Pit Forum, unless we open up to Zoom and so on and record it there, then, you know, ones will have a chance. So let's utilize what we have at our disposal, as his mother used to say, use technology um, to, the, to our advantage. You know, we, we need now to improve on the economics because we create, you know, the, the recitation if we don't put practicality to it. And all the aspects of our creed call for economics to make it happen. So we look forward to a great 131st globally. You know, we look forward to see the day when Ethiopia itself too will have children dancing in the streets and singing happy birthday to Haile Selassie I as it was in his reign because Ethiopia must remember the significant and outstanding contribution of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I, that has brought Ethiopia from out of a traditional isolated empire to a global acceptance across the world. You know, the other day I saw Ethiopian airline pilots together and they were celebrating. And I wrote in my comments, say, remember the words of Emperor Haile Selassie I, who laid the foundations. So for I and I, let us look at his majesty, continue his great work, look at her majesty, look at her great works. And, and you know, we have, we have the best two um, example of a male and a female in our corner. We are privileged. Let's follow their examples as we move on in the 21st century and beyond. Give thanks, give thanks. And this platform, the Lion Voice Network, we stay away from the mix up. We stay away from the controversial topics unless they are, you know, edifying us in terms of our future development. Um, we are really looking at a proactive platform that will help us to chart the future. Um, you know, I particularly am aiming this platform for our young brethren um, to cultivate the Rastafari man who can lead us into the Rastafari future. Um, and, and it's so important um, to have these conversations. Why? Because the time has come for the lions and the lioness to tell our story. And this is the Lion Voice. Lion Voice. Well, front to us, a son was born and a child was given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called the Wonderful, Counselor, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Then he called him. Lift up for I when he was born, rain fall from the sky. Then he called him. Lift up for I when he was grown in your plains he fly. Then he called him. Lift up for I, I young break the chain, weep not, don't cry. Then he called him. List of for I read the Revelation chapter 5 verse 5 Then Born near the city of Harar The inspiration for Bob Marley's guitar People crowd him like some big superstar It no matter if a England or Cote d'Ivoire No matter if you're brown or black like a tar Haile Selassie, Sefi and all tribal paradigm Fee gada Mount Zion Fee drive soul a car from the car Straight to Zanzibar Who we are? The sons of Listo for I When he was born, rain fall from the sky Lift up for I, when he was grown in airplanes he fly. Then, Lift up for I, the lion break the chain, weep not, don't cry. Then, Lift up for I, read the Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. Royal governor, from the age of 13 years, leave the palace, figure back in a school with him peers. He's the head without fear, he's one to be revered. When them call his name, then the heathen scare. Plus the priest concern, and him teachers concern. Cause all this little youth want to do is just learn. But he waits his turn, till him turn the chance match. The people rejoice when he crown as the rust they call him. Lift up for I, when he was born, rain fall from the sky. Then, Lift up for I, when he was grown in airplanes, he fly. Then, 
little stuff for ride I can break the chain, we knock down fried this stuff for right, read your revelation, chapter 5, verse 5. Well, Ras McConnell, call him eating with all him general them. Say him funeral a come, and him have something fi tell them. Him say, we fight together since the days of Adawa. Him say, protect my son and help him unite Africa. Well, him generals, them start cry when them hear this sound. Them say, your wishes are command and bow down to the ground. When him funeral they come, it shock the whole town. Fi see this little youth, him have a army surround, they call him.